This is a quick clone comparison video for a set of uh, binoculars. This is the Zeiss 10 by 25 millimeter Conquest. Here's the box. This is the real box that they come in. I don't have the box for the fakes, but it looked exactly like this with the exception of it did not have um, it did not have the bar graphs on the end. This was just, there was no sticker on the end. So, um, so you can see these are 10 by 25 compacts, conquests. Made in good old Hungary. Who would have thought? So, um, so you look at these things and, you, and um, which ones are the real ones and which ones are the fakes? And I'm going to tell you, put them in your hands you know they feel they feel a little different actually now that I just noticed it a little bit different but not much actually the ones the fakes feel like they should and the actually the real ones are the ones that kind of feel kind of hokey but um, but there's some significant differences here I'm going to go over not to mention the optics so these right here are the fakes and these are the real ones and um, the real ones are kind of are are a phenolic hard plastic kind of case. The fakes are actually rubberized. These are what you all, I thought they would come. So these are the fakes and these are the real ones. I don't really have a, I probably should have, shouldn't have shot this in 4K because then I could have uh, widened this out. You can see a little difference around the barrels where the lenses are at. You can see there's kind of a step there that there's not on the fakes. Um, Got the serial number um, plotted out on this thing, but here's the label on the real one, and here's the label on the fake. So uh, the labels, they're not identical, but you know, I mean, so the the real one does, you know, it's got something about yards on it, but it doesn't say made in Hungary if that's an advantage, but these say made by Carl Zeiss in Hungary. Um, the cords are a little different. This is the real one. And the fake is much thicker and it's much more nylon-y, satin-y. Looks like it would, tell you the truth, looks like it would snag on things and start getting whiskers on it. And it's uh, bigger around. Um, there is a huge difference in these things, to a two huge differences in these things, which I'll go over. Um, the fakes are, in the box and everything, uh, are about 60-something bucks shipped to your door from, um, you know, the land of the dragon and the, uh, lantern. Um, these guys are, you're going to get very close to 600 bucks on these. The, the advantage of these is they're, they're very light and they're very small, and if you're going someplace and you're going to need some spy glasses or you want a secondary set of spy glasses, then uh, these are nice and small. I want to tell you what, I'm not too happy with how small they are because they got an extremely small exit people. They're 10 by 25s and they're a little difficult to get. You just don't feel super comfortable using them. Um, I've been using Zeiss for a long time. You can probably look at this one right here and tell, you know, about what the vintage is of it. I've had this, you know, getting close to 30 years and so uh, they're just they make really nice stuff so um, I wanted a small set those are 10 by 42s these are 10 by 25s um, the difference in these guys mainly the fake ones are on the right is um, obviously I'm gonna tell you when you first pick them up and depending on what you're looking at you go boy these fake ones are pretty good and um, so you look at sides of buildings and you look at signs and you look at, you know, a side of a house and you're trying to look at texture and everything. And, and I, when I first looked at them, I go, hmm, I'm trying to figure out. So then I said, I need to stop and do what I'm doing here and go out and try to figure out how much difference in the resolving power there is on these two, um, these two little mini binoculars. Um, let me tell you where you see the difference immediately and it is huge, as you would expect it should be looking at birds you go look at a bird and uh, the real ones 
blow these away. The contrast, the, the color resolution, uh, the detail, the resolving detail, I mean, it's just night and day. Um, I think that for 60 some odd dollars, you could probably get some lower end things like I think Conus and some other ones make uh, little mini binoculars that could probably beat these clones handily. I haven't had them in my hands because this is the first small set of mini binoculars I've ever had or first set, to tell you the truth, I've never touched any other ones. Um, so these are mine, the real ones. Um, the other thing, which is kind of a huge problem, is when you look at the controls, this is what you would expect on the Zeiss. I don't have a lot of light here today, so you have uh, your um, diopter adjustment for your vision <coughs> on this right uh, lens, so to match the left, and then you've got the centralized focusing, and that's um, you know that's a nice way of doing things. And you wouldn't think that because a lot of lower end uh, binoculars do the similar thing, you can adjust one of them so you're matched up on your eyes and they're tuned up properly, and you got a central focusing thing. This is on all the cheaper low end ones. You see this on all of them. So let me show you what our Chinese friends did, which really, <coughs> excuse me, I didn't realize that this was such a huge expensive thing to do, but they've got separate focusing for each eye. So when you match them up on some distance, and then you look at another distance where you're going to have to adjust the focus, you've got to adjust each eye separately. That is a massive uh, pain in the wherever you sit down at. So... Um, that's a huge problem. I have no clue why they did this because you can get lower end binoculars that, that for 30 or $40 that have centralized focusing and adopter adjustment. Why they did that, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why they did that. I, I realized that they tried to match the look because if you're looking at these things in, a, in an eBay uh, photo trying to get ripped off, is they, from this angle, they look almost identical other than the fact that the, the adopter adjustment doesn't have knurling because you don't want to accidentally bump it and knock it off whereas both these have knurling. So if you're looking at it on an eBay post trying to figure out if you're getting fakes and you say, I, want an absolute, I don't want a stock pick, I want a real pick of the binoculars you're selling, this is the easiest giveaway right here. Is both of these barrels have knurling on them and this one does not on the real binoculars. Other than that, you're going to have quite the hard time unless you look for the step. So I always try to say, well, what could you pick out in a photograph? There's probably three things that would jump out at you if you got a genuine photograph. You would try to get, hopefully, you now if they turn the light just right, you wouldn't be able to see the step in the barrel. So that would be difficult. You'd have to have a good photograph and it'd be just at the right light where you can see the step that the fake one doesn't have. You definitely would look for the knurled connectors on it, and one of them should not be knurled on the real one. And then if it turns over, uh, there's a little piece of plastic just stuck on here that's actually maybe indented now I think about it. But the serial number, the, yeah, the real one has a spot in the wrong spot, by the way, for the serial number because this one's down here and this one's up here, uh, but there's no serial number on it. So, um, so those are the things I would look for. I'm into eight minutes here, so I want to wrap this up pretty quick. Uh, I guess there's one other thing. If you see the, uh, here is the real uh, case done pretty nice. I don't know if it's real leather or not or just pleather. Uh, it's got a magnet in it that closes it. Uh, it's got a very nice uh, kind of uh, nylon, heavy nylon interior and it's it's made, you know, it's made pretty good. It looks like it's actually made out of leather but you know, who knows. Um, here's the fake, no logo, um, just kind of thin. The inside is kind of a velour kind of a velour and uh, it's got a magnetic closure, but it's nowhere near the quality. This is very heavy. It smells like it might be leather. It probably is. And this is not. It's, this is definitely a pleathery feel. You can see the grain difference. You can see the stitching difference. So that would be the other thing to look for. You can't tell by the box other than the fakes don't have any kind of barcoding on the box. So. Um, if you have any questions about these um, two mini binoculars, uh, let me know. I'll be happy to answer uh, them. Uh, the fake ones, I've uh, got to go back to my buddy who owns them, so uh, I won't be able to probably look at anything in any more detail. But uh, they're okay, but I'm not sure. First of all, the thing that's a no-go for me if you were trying to buy some cheap binoculars and you just wanted cheap binoculars, they're not bad um, optically. They're not terrible. But the um, main thing is these adjustments. That's... Psh, no brainer who could put up with that so uh, so I would say don't get them but the main thing is is that if you're going to go on eBay 
and you're, you allow to be prone to get ripped off, the, the fakes are on the top here, is that uh, you could easily get thrown by this. And if they had done this properly, I'm going to tell you, you you'd, most people would never figure this out other than the fact that, and you know, you got 10 by 25s, you know, you might just, because they're a little lower resolving power on a bird, you might say, well, that's just how they are, you know, trying to get a 10 by 25 kind of format, maybe they just don't do too well. But let me tell you, these things optically are like you would expect out of Zeiss. These things optically are greatly behind them. So uh, uh, feel free to make any comments. Thank you.